Welcome back to the chat where we talk about all things Chatham. This is our third podcast and we're very excited today. We're going to have our county manager, Lee Smith, on and we'll introduce him in a moment um, to talk about Government 101. I'm Katherine Glasby. And I'm Abby Murphy. And over there is Nick Beard. You can't see him. He's off camera today. Hey, guys. Um, I'm here. Usually he does have a camera, but he's off camera today. But he is our producer extraordinaire, and we couldn't do this without him. Um, we have a lot to talk about in Government 101 today, so we're going to get right into the show. Our guest today is County Manager Lee Smith. Thank you for being here today, Good Mr. Morning. Smith. Good morning. Before, On a nice cold morning. Nice cold morning. Yeah, I love uh, it. Yeah, it, it fall has arrived or mm -hmm. winter. I'm not sure which. I don't either one. It's it's not summer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, before we get started in really talking about government 101 and the sure. differences in county government, no one better to tell us because you have over 30 years of experience in almost, county government. Almost 34 years. Wow. Yep. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, originally from Eastern North Carolina. Um, uh, raised on the islands, Outer Banks in North Carolina, um, small communities, which I think was good because uh, some of the communities that I worked in after college, um, I was able to kind of Mayberry, you know, work through um, sanitation, uh, planning, economic development, um, you know, developing 911 on maps on a wall when they first came out. That I'm aging myself now, so, um, but you know, to be able to management of hurricanes and you know emergency events and then um, after leaving you know um, my home community then going directly um, into economic development um, which was good was able to do things in the US Canada and Europe travel and do recruitment and retention um, for companies like Caterpillar um, um, we had several um, SAS up in Raleigh North Carolina so that was interesting. It gave me a really good global perspective on economic development. Enjoyed that, but figured out that I liked operations. Um, got into um, water bond referendums, sewer bond referendums in Columbus County, North Carolina, and figured out that I really liked the day to day. Mm -hmm. So I went to another county and worked about 10 years uh, in uh, operations. Uh, as a county manager and then moved to Wayne County, North Carolina for 13 years and was, you know, thrilled when I got recruited to Savannah, Georgia, one of my favorite places in the world. And uh, it was kind of a dream come true that I could, you know, bring my daughter and myself here. We live in Georgetown, which I love. Um, you know, we have great neighbors and um, anyway, Savannah's been good to us and it's home. Well, I'm certainly glad you're here. I'm a little bit biased. Uh, Savannah is my home, so <laughs> I'm very now. biased that, that, you know, it's the best place to live. And sure. I'm certainly glad that you're here because I've really enjoyed working for yeah, you for the last... work with all the team chat. Yeah, it, and it really is a team. And we're going to talk about that a little bit further on in our podcast today. Okay. Abby, let's, let's get this thing started. Yes, um, I, so I'm curious, what exactly does a county manager do? Walk us through kind of your typical day of what a county manager would do. Sometimes I will say head cook and bottle washer. <laughs> um, but seriously, um, it really depends on the county. Uh, but in this case, as county manager, I'm almost like uh, chief operating officer. Mm -hmm. The chairman of the board of commissioners uh, is the chief executive officer. Mm -hmm. That's how our government is set up here. And every county is different across the nation. There are over 3,300 counties uh, in the U.S. Uh, so every, everyone's a little different. Um, but uh, here, uh, as county manager, I oversee all general operations and finance. So mm -hmm. probably the biggest thing is the budget. You know, when you're looking at a half a million to $600 million a year, you know, I'm at home thinking, you know, writing a check for $500, and that makes me nervous. And we're here working on million-dollar uh, decisions on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep things in perspective. I love what I do every day. You know, there are days you're like, okay, I've got this. This is stressing. But I love when I get up in the morning that I'm coming to work because we're trying to make a difference in the community. And um, that is through, you know, public works, um, recreation. Um, we have, you know, out in our community, though they're not directly um, working under me, we have the jail, the sheriff's office, we have the judiciary, the courts, um, tax office, we have an engineering department, mm -hmm. uh, we work on roads. Um, we are not in the water business anymore. We sold the water system a few years ago, 
We still maintain the sewer system, but it's operated privately. Um, we just do capital improvements on that. Um, so, you know, obviously public information, uh, finance. Uh, I would say um, uh, with uh, some of the most important things that we do um, is looking at the needs of the community. And when I first got here, we started something called the Blueprint. Mm -hmm. And the Blueprint is a strategic plan that looks at, you know, 20 years out. But I will tell you, planning occurs on a single day, by every day. And um, I do believe that government, we have mandated services, but um, like judiciary and jails and those type of things. But the community should drive what we do and how we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, our boss is ultimately, for me, is the Board of Commissioners that we'll talk about, but it's the community, it's the citizens and the business that should drive this community. It's their community. Um, we can have our own ideas, but we need to listen to them. So, as I also believe, as county manager, it's my job to look into the future, to look at, you know, the economics, what we see coming, um, you know, one of the biggest things we do is work with CETA, Economic Development, to recruit industry. Um, you know, with, that's really on a daily basis because to improve a community, what do you do? You educate people at a higher level, um, you create jobs so people can be, you know, sustainable and have a really good quality of life. So as manager, I believe it's, you know, my job to do that. Um, you know, when I look at um, roads, you know, when you see a pothole mm -hmm. on some of the unincorporated areas, our crews go out there. And I always say to folks, uh, if you see something that is a concern to you, give us a call. Uh, you know, call Public Works. We have Chatham Connect you can go to on your phone, download that. Um, uh, you know, so that's something really important. Or call Public Works. You can go to chathamcounty.org uh, and you can find us, you know, on the web. Um, and uh, I'll always say to citizens, if you're unsatisfied with something, call us because sure. uh, you know it's kind of like the the preacher gets you know in church on Sunday and the congregations you know they're mad at him they're like, you know it's like what's going on well Miss Edna's in the hospital well nobody told me you know mm -hmm. you know some grand entity sure. didn't like say oh they're there I don't know and the board doesn't know if we're not told so we really want people to we want people to be satisfied that we meet their needs but you know we want their um, we want their response, you know, and for them to be involved. That's a community. That's a community. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. Why do we have a Board of Commissioners and what does that mean to the county as a whole? Sure. Well, um, a lot of times folks think that, you know, the board itself makes the day-to-day -day operation decisions. They don't. They are a legislative body. Mm -hmm. um, they develop policy rules and law. So when you hear an ordinance or resolution, that is an act of creating law. That's what they do. And again, their biggest um, item is to adopt a budget of which myself and our team developed the budget, a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are a lot of governments on the state and federal level that don't have to be balanced. We have to be balanced uh, to the penny. Right. And we do that. Uh, this county for 30 some years has received uh, certificates, uh, you know, recognizing them as superior in finance and management, which is awesome. Um, in fact, um, we have just been re-rated for bonds uh, so that we have a better, basically, credit rating. Sure. So if we borrow money, it saves us money. But with the Board of Commissioners, you know, we bring them um, items for decisions. Uh, we bring them what we call staff reports during our meetings. We meet every other Friday, and we welcome the public to come. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that you know really concerns me and um, is complacency in a community. Yeah. You know, if you got a concern, call your commissioner. They're always willing to listen. Call my office, any of us. We're yeah. willing to listen. We might be able to help you. We might not, or we might be able to find a compromise, mm -hmm. or give you better information or data. But uh, the board of commissioners, you know, we have nine, right. and they each we have eight districts, and then we have one at large, and the one at large is the chair. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's uh, Chairman Scott. So, um, you know, they work very well together. You will see them when they get up and um, um, debate issues. Um, you know, that's what they're supposed to do. They're looking right. out for their constituency. Um, and sometimes people think, well, you know, they're angry. Not necessarily. They're looking out for you in a district. 
but ultimately for all almost 300,000 people. I have to remind myself of that. There's 300,000 people here. That's a big job to look mm -hmm. after 300,000 people. It is, and we might yeah. even have a bigger number than that with after, the census yeah. after next oh, yeah. year. That, census is exciting. huge. That census is huge. Uh, when you get into census, census drives money and revenue that really will help us like with parks and recreation and all the cities and the things that they do and water and sewer and infrastructure, roads. Um, you know, we just, uh, with over 60% uh, approval, passed a $400 million splost. And that's gonna, you know, you're gonna see, we've done some really good things on recreation the last two years, yeah. get ready. The next two years, you're gonna see field improvements, baseball fields, uh, football fields, new gymnasiums. But what I'm thrilled about is the relationship with our municipalities. The municipalities, we have come together. I do something called calling on managers every mm -hmm. quarter where all the cities and the county and our teams get together and we talk about issues. But, you know, we're similar, but we're different when you talk about what we do. Sure. But we're partners. The lines should be invisible. Now, we know legally they're not, but right. they should be invisible. So we're going to be working on joint recreation projects, road projects, because remember, a road and roads in, in Chatham County may start in Savannah, go through unincorporated, and we'll talk about unincorporated in a minute, uh, unincorporated into Garden City, Pooler, and then Bloomingdale the right. same road right so would it not make sense when we pave it for all of us to come together and pave the thing all at once we do those kind of things and that's great i've been in places where that does not happen we've got great managers um you know in our cities here in chatham county that work together uh, and that's that's been phenomenal i always think it's funny when i'm i'm out amongst the public and i'm talking to people they're always like oh well the county and the the city of savannah hate each other no, we don't. It's, well, you guys talk on a daily basis. You know, I don't say it's hilarious, but I find it interesting. You know, when you look at, um, you know, anything in the public, in the press, you know, those are little sound bites, and sure. I get that. But I will tell you, on a daily basis right now, Pat Monahan, who is a, you know, former Team Chatham member, which yes. we're thrilled, you know, and Pat's a really good guy. But then with all of our, you know, Robbie Bird and Sean Gillen at Tybee, mm -hmm. um, we talk weekly if right. not daily about a project or they will call me or Mike Kaler or Linda Kramer my assistant county managers and we work together mm -hmm. um, from funding or cooperation um, if they have an incident you know I say when the red lights and the blue lights come on we're there right. they're here um, that's just you know the cooperation here has been wonderful but I used to use the word partnership a lot mm -hmm. I use now, I've replaced it with relationship. Yeah. It's relationships because we know each other, we trust each other, and that's mm -hmm. what it takes. So sometimes when I hear, oh, they don't get along, no, it's, it's no. Right. And you might not get along on a certain issue. You may agree to, to disagree. Yeah. And that's fine. You know, that's life. I mean, you know, if right. you've ever been married, you know, you know, you have to agree to disagree sometimes. Yeah. A but, lot. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about, you alluded to it when you were talking about what you do as a manager, mm -hmm. there are parts of the county government that don't report to you because they report to another elected official. Correct. That's like the, the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. the courts, um, some of those. So you don't have any day-to-day -day operational things that you do with them, but the board does their budget. The checkbook. Yeah. Um, you know, the sheriff, the DA, uh, judiciary, um, you know, when we get into the tax commissioner, they are constitutional offers, officers set by law. Right. So they are elected by the mm -hmm. people of Chatham County. Now, we, you know, when they come in with their budget, we set their budget. They make a request and we work with them. And I will tell you, for the most part, we all get along well, but there's that, I mean, they have their own personnel Mm -hmm. um, you know, some adopt our policies and procedures, some do not, and that's fine. Uh, but we fund them. And I will give you the example of the sheriff's office. Um, you know, he operates the largest portion of our budget. Right. Of the general fund, uh, which is, you know, we have, uh, in a minute, we'll talk about unincorporated or SDS, Special Service District. And, uh, you know, the general fund is the overall budget. But uh, the jail is one of our biggest expenses, um, you know, and he, he has a major job out there. But 
where he has that authority over uh, his folks, his deputies, correctional officers, general operations. I, I was speaking to him this morning mm -hmm. uh, about some building issues. Right. Because and, the know, buildings and the facilities are yours. We, you know, the county owns those and we're responsible. So you have to have that cooperation. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been moving things around. You know, we've got one of the biggest projects in Splice is a new trial court building. Right. I mean, the Coleman Courthouse is busting at the seams. And we're not building because we just want a new building. Right. Uh, if you're a juror and you've been in our juror room, you sit in the hall, you stand, mm -hmm. yeah. it's really bad. And that's not fair to our citizens. We need, and our commissioner said, we got to do something better. So the new trial courthouse is about a $100 million project. Sounds like a lot of money, but um, Splice can pay for that. And remember, 40% of Splice is paid for by the tourists you see walking around in Chatham County. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. right. uh, that means we offset taxes to our community. We don't have to raise property taxes. So that is an awesome thing. $400 million is a big chunk of change. Uh, so when I look at like the, the sheriff's office, the jail was built with SPLOS money. Money didn't have to be borrowed, and that was $100 million. Mm -hmm. We would have huge debt service payments. So SPLOS has really helped. But, you know, all the you know constitutional officers work with us. Um, again, we may have things we agree and we, things we disagree, but we try to compromise and work through them. Uh, again, relationships and try Absolutely. to build those. They're not going to be perfect, um, but we, we work together, you know, and it's... Um, I love those other things, you know, um, like with the courts, they have a tough job. Mm -hmm. You know, we have over uh, 1,800 inmates in our facility. Um, a lot of concerns about mental health, drug abuse, um, you know, fair trials, speedy trials. And mm -hmm. I do believe over, you know, in the, I call it the big courthouse, um, they're working as hard as they can, but it's tough. It's really tough. Absolutely. I know when I have gone on different, um, trips to, to look at like um, our new emergency uh, facility that we're going to be building for yes. 911 and, and SEMA and a couple other Hope departments. Hope to ground in uh, 2020. Yeah. So when I've been on some of those those trips to talk to other places mm -hmm. about how their 911 is structured or how their, their jail, they, they mention inmates and things like yeah. that, other places that are the same size as us have less calls for service. Yes. And they have less inmates than Correct. us. We're kind of unique in the service that we have to provide both for our nine one one and for our inmate and for our policing. Yeah. Um I that kind of blew me away. And yeah. there doesn't seem to be a great explanation for it. It's just we're an anomaly. Um and I think for, for the jail for them to have eighteen hundred inmates on any given day it's, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. It is a lot. But you know, when you go back and I mentioned the blueprint, the strategic mm -hmm. plan, uh, the one thing that we really um that came out as number one in the plan and we really have hit it hard and are being recognized nationally is for mental health. Yes. Uh we have we have a lot of homeless, but um, you know, we have a lot of people you know, that are ne not necessarily homeless that have mental health issues. It could be depression, bipolar, it could be a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but then we also have substance abuse and they usually are tied together. Mm -hmm. Right now we're estimating four or 500 of our inmates have substance abuse and mental health problems. Right. So we're the largest mental health facility in the state of Georgia, if you look at it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one else has that many beds. So we're having to oversee that. But I do believe in prevention um, but also, uh, you know, getting in, we have, we have upgraded our mental health um, medical care in the, in the detention center. But we have to do more outside, you know, in the community to prevent someone from getting in the judicial system, particularly our kids. Right. We've just started a new program called the Front Porch. Mm -hmm. And that is a prevention mechanism. When a parent or a teacher sees a child moving in the, you know, possible... Um, crime or getting in trouble, we can take them with the parents or guardian to the front porch and get them uh, into programs. Mm -hmm. um, it can be mental health, general health. Um, you know, I, and I talk to Dr. Devet all the time. She's wonderful. Uh, and, you know, including her on what do we need to do? And she was a big part of City of Savannah, Chatham County, Juvenile Courts, everyone to put that together. So we've got really good programs, but if we're going to stop that recidivism and that 1,800 inmate, it's um, education, right? It's training, giving jobs, 
I mean, there are people that commit crimes to feed their kids. Absolutely, there are. And I, I can't imagine what they're going through. No. Now, we have those who commit crimes that may not be related to anything, mm -hmm. and they need to be in jail and dealt with. We have, you know, in some felons, and that's, that's a very sad situation. But I think we can prevent, if we do mental health, mm -hmm. health, education, jobs. That's how you fix poverty, underemployment, and I, and I absolutely know that will fix the, uh, the issue of inmate numbers. It will. To help people be sustainable. I, I think that's very true, coming sure. from a law enforcement background that we've been oh, preaching yeah. that for years. Sure. Let, let's switch a little bit, unless you, you've alluded to the unincorporated or the SSD, the yes. Special Service District, versus the general MNO budget, mm -hmm. um, which is the services we provide as a, a county as a whole. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit more about the SSD okay. and what services we provide and okay. how we get those funds. Well, the SSD, I call it the city of Chatham. <laughs> it really yeah. is because the unincorporated is, and most folks know this and some do not, they'll have a Savannah address or a Garden City address, but they're really an unincorporated. Right. Unincorporated is um, any uh, person who is not in a city right. within Chatham County. Uh, we have like 90 plus thousand people, so we're the second largest city, Savannah being first. Um, you know, so what we do is like a city has, um, Go uh, Garden City or Savannah has a city tax. Correct. We have a special service district tax, which only they, you know, we pay. I live in unincorporated Chatham County. So we pay that like we were in a city. Mm -hmm. And it pays for unincorporated some, uh, some parks, some of that spread out countywide, oh. but it pays for our new wonderful Chatham County Police Department that I'm so proud of. Uh, it pays for dry trash. Uh, it pays for um, you know the transfer stations, the landfills, uh, things like um, Tybee Pier. Mm -hmm. uh, it pays for uh, roads out in the unincorporated area. Um, you know we do like right now we're doing a really great thing where we're getting ahead of the broadband mm -hmm. and fiber networking. Where when we have people coming in and SSDs helping with this, as we put we're putting conduit down basically open pipes mm -hmm. so when companies come in to lay fiber they have a place to do it we call it dig once because one of the best things we can do is provide technology to the community I mean everything we do now everybody's doing this or have a tablet when you yeah. go to work what do you do you have a computer at home your TV um, everything so that's that's a big thing we're paying for um, you know I, I will tell you during the storm, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, you know, SSD treated like a city. Uh, we had to pay for separately uh, to do uh, uh, pickup of leaf and limb. But then the cities had to do their own when we applied to FEMA. So right. there's a depth. So I think it's the easiest way to describe it is the city of Chatham. I like it's that. It's totally yeah. different. Then I think it helps in the mind to go, aha, yeah. why are we different? Because then people, I get this all the time, well, why do we pay? city taxes and county taxes like somebody in savannah well if you pay city taxes like city of savannah and then you see county taxes they don't pay ssd remember mm -hmm. it's a separate city or separate taxing district um, overall uh, when you pay that county tax that uh, mno or general fund you're paying for jail for courts uh, libraries you're paying for things like that those are those overall services that are um, available to everyone. Uh, so that's the difference of like dry trash is only for uh, the city of Chatham, unincorporated. Mm -hmm. And then you would have another type program within the city of Savannah. Now, that also brings about a really cool opportunity. Um, right now, I'm getting ready to convene the first of the year, 13 counties in Georgia and Beaufort and Jasper County in South Carolina, where we're gonna to come together to talk about, as I said, roads that traverse sure. all through Chatham, then go to Effingham or go to Bullock, roads don't stop. Yeah, right. 95 doesn't stop. It right. goes through water, sewer, economic development. So we're gonna to convene to see all of our common elements and how we can work together. Wow. Um, one example is recycling. I, and, and not being critical of anyone, I think we do a really poor job of recycling. We do. I mean, let's just face it. 
We don't. And that fills up the private landfill. We're not in the landfill business. We don't do sanita- you know, sanitation mm-hmm. of uh, what I would call kitchen trash. You know, we do sure. leaf and limb. That's all we do. Uh, the private companies pick up uh, the other. But we're looking at how can we, when you recycle, you have to have volume. Yes. So could we all, and I would give the instance of, we talked about the bush road thing recently. Mm-hmm. We have a lot, particularly during storms, mulch. We break right. up the leaf and limb. Well, what do you do with it? It just piles up and you can only give away so much and you sometimes can't give it away. Mm-hmm. But if you have enough of that or enough of glass or plastic, and if we could get a consortium of many counties and cities to get volume, the companies will come to us. So, and I will tell you, um, the reason I'm bringing in Beaufort and Jasper, Highway 17, is the, the bridge across the Savannah River, does it dead end? No. No, it keeps going. Mm-hmm. So how do we work with them? They have just, I say they, um, the state of South Carolina has allocated, along with the federal folks, to four lane Highway 17, um, from uh, the bridge here in Savannah, mm-hmm. um, moving out to 95, and as mm-hmm. you turn to go towards Bluffton and Hilton Head. So thank that's God. exciting. Oh, thank goodness. That's but it's amazing. tough. It's going to be tough, and it's going to take years because on each side of that road, what is there? Wetlands. Right. Right. So it's, it's going to be tough, and it's going to take years, but the money's been allocated, and we are thrilled. But there again, relationships then develop into partnerships. Right. So that's that's pretty exciting. It is. Abby, when you first came on board with, with the PIO office, a major event had just happened for us. Um, Nick and I actually went into one of our conference rooms on a Friday, I believe in June of 2017, and we watched a special city council meeting, and it was a vote to separate the Joint Police Department. Yes. And when you came on board, we were already in the throes of transitioning and you, you did some things that we're going to talk about in a minute. But Mr. Smith, I know that setting up a police department, well, maybe not something you really were looking forward to doing, you've had a great time doing it. It's one of your biggest, you, you said in a meeting the other day, that was one of your proudest accomplishments was being able to set up this uh, police department from scratch and do it in the time frame that we had which was six months when the um you know first of all let me back up a little bit you know there's been a lot of conversation over the years about <clears throat> appropriate service in the city of chatham unincorporated mm-hmm. um you know savannah can only do so much sure so i have i'm not going to criticize savannah they were mm. they have a lot of issues as mm-hmm. far as crime um i do believe the separation of the departments is a positive because right. we can concentrate on inc- unincorporated. They can concentrate on Savannah. Now we work. I will tell you, our chiefs work together. It's flawless. Right. It's flawless. If they need us, we need them. On the money, we're there. But I do believe it's turned into a positive. Now for us, it saved us two million dollars a year. We were able to convert that first two million into capital to have appropriate facilities, appropriate vehicles, equipment, but now we have a savings of $2 million a year that we were able to shift to places like recreation in the unincorporated area, which is awesome. Right. We also have been able to reduce response time. Mm -hmm. We're there quicker, but I will tell you the one thing, and I would say first or second best thing I've ever been able to do was to hire the country's best police chief from Kalamazoo, (laughs) Michigan, uh, Chief Jeff Hadley. He's awesome. He has brought together a team of officers and investigators that when I see them walk into a store or something and they talk to the the storekeeper, the clerk, I see them stopping by. I mean, this is an interesting thing. I had uh, a female officer stopped by my house one day when I was mowing the yard. She had no clue who I was. Mm-hmm. Right. She came up and introduced herself and said, this is my my recent beat. I'll be working out here. And I said, well, look, I'd love for you to come to HOA. So I'm saying, we talked four or five minutes and I appreciate what you do. And I said, you know, I introduced myself as Lee Smith. And then I said, by the way, I'm county manager. She had a blank look on her face for a second. And I said, love you. You know, <laughs> this is what I'm looking for. Uh, but we really pushed, and Jeff does community, community policing, because then if we can get into the schools, get into communities, again, back up, we prevent crime mm-hmm. from ever happening. The other thing is, when you have a relationship and there are things going on, people will tell you. 
You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like Crime Stoppers. People call Crime Stoppers with tips, sure. call the police departments. But if we can get those th that kind of information, don't be afraid of law enforcement. Absolutely. Don't be afraid uh, because you can be a part of saving this community. Absolutely. And you have to you talk. And now I will tell you, you're brave when you do. Mm -hmm. And we understand the fear. But that's our responsibility as citizens. It is. But, yes, yeah, CCPD, just awesome. Um, so when you see them, first off, it's like the military. If you see somebody in the military, thank them. Mm -hmm. But we have boots on the ground in this country that are fighting the fight every day, night and day. When I lay in bed at night and I hear a siren go off, I'm able to lie in a warm bed, but in my head I'll say, you know, God, please look out for that officer or that EMS par right. paramedic or that firefighter, but thank you that they're there to help me. Yes. You know, that's major. That's it a is. major thing. So thrilled. But I will tell you, my national conference, when I called them the day after the vote by the, the um, city council of Savannah, I called Martha Perego, and she's a, kind of a mentor with me with the ICMA in Washington, D.C., and I told her, and she said, Lee, it's going to take you 18 months to 24 months. And I said, well, Martha, I've been given orders by the board that I have six months. She said, Lee, that's impossible. <laughs> well, that set me off, and I went, <laughs> I'll be back with you. Six months later, we had boots on the ground and, and cars on the road. Now, with the help of the sheriff, right. we had to have some help for another six months. But within that next six-month period, that by the end of 12 months, 100% filled. Our turnover rate, we've lost two people. One, two, um, I think they went back to where they were before. Mm -hmm. Awesome group. Awesome yes. group. The morale is great, but uh, that's what it's about, good management. Um, and Jeff's doing that. Uh, Terry Shoup, of course. Uh, Julie Tolbert. I love Julie. And uh, I was able to convince her once she retired from SPD to come over to Chatham. I said she just wanted to work for me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, she's awesome. Awesome. Again, we're a family. Right. You know, and uh, anyway, so CCPD, I'm so proud of them. So proud. And I'm going to give... Uh, we put together a transition team. That's where and I was so going did, next. And so did Savannah. We had, a, uh, I would say, what, about 20 people, give mm -hmm. or take? And literally, the day after the vote, I brought them together and said, here's our mission. And I will tell you, they put their nose down on the grindstone and worked together from purchasing. What kind of, you know, guns do you have to have? What kind of cars? What kind of radars? What, you know, what's our mission? And, uh, and this was before we had hired a chief. I was going to say, this is before we had officers. Yes. yes. We, we had our returning officers that were Chatham County police officers Correct. before the Joint Police Department. Correct. So we had like 16 to 20 that were coming back. They came back. They were former, C former CCPD. CCPD. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really have any of the management people. No. Um, so that was, that was hard. That we was were, tough. We were lucky to have some people that had knowledge within our transition Correct. team Correct. that were able to help us purchase what we needed to purchase, yeah. start putting together those policies. Oh, yeah. Um, we had a project manager. Uh, we have um, Kelvin Lewis, who's awesome. We brought him on project management to help keep it organized. Mm -hmm. And that's what a project manager does, keep everybody on task. Uh, but, you know, everybody, they just came together. And, you know, the thing that was thrilling with the team is not you're sitting at the conference table and say, you do this, you do this. When we would break up from a meeting, it was really interesting to me, and really cool to me, if you don't mind me saying, that I watched two or three of them sit down and go, okay, now how do we do this? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were bringing themselves together. Mm -hmm. Right. That was awesome. And that's the only way we accomplished this. So, Martha, we did it. That's right. <laughs> we and, did it. And I have to brag on, on the PIO team just a little bit oh, gosh, because yes. they really came together. And oh. every time I see one of our police cars, I get so excited oh, I do too. because yeah. it's like, ooh, we created that design. And that was this lady right here. <laughs> That's right. She did our logo. She did all the designs for the cars, the buildings. Anything that was graphic design, was awesome. she did, and it. she's won awards for it. Yeah, right down to uniforms. Um, I mean, that's yeah. how detailed it got, like yeah. stitching. Yes. I mean, seriously, we had people dealing with that, but it was beautiful. Do you remember the first car that showed up? I have them on my Facebook. I think it's on our yeah. Facebook. Yes. That first vehicle. Uh, my two assistant county managers are myself. I will, That was one of my proudest days. And, of course, I had to play with the sirens and the lights. <laughs> you know, I'm 12. So we got to do that. And it was just, I mean, I was almost teary-eyed mm -hmm. because I went, it was something tangible. 
This right. is real. Yeah. But, you know, we walked in, and I know you remember this. Our motto from day one was do no harm. Right. If we were doing anything that would harm Savannah, and their team did do no harm with the county. Right. Do no harm. And if we saw something that was going to be a detriment to one or the other, we said stop, time out, Let's, we've got to get this in order. And guess what? It worked. It and did. we've got a good relationship. And that's, that's probably the most important thing, oh, yeah. was even though these two agencies split back into to their parent agencies, sure. they worked together flawlessly. Oh, every single day. And, every and that's day. that's what this community needs. Yes. Um, because you, anybody who knows anything about law enforcement knows about mutual aid and all those things. Yeah. Um, and so you can't do it by yourself. You you don't oh, live in this him. town in a vacuum. No. Um, so if you I do, think you're going to fail. Absolutely. You're going to fail. Well, I, I know that's one of the biggest accomplishments for me was sure. was working on that team. Oh yeah. And uh, just being a part of that, it brings a certain pride to Team Chatham to know oh, that yeah. they did that. Mm -hmm. And every person in Team Chatham had some part in this, oh, whether absolutely. it was just their department head working on it or maybe they had assignments that trickled down to them. And and we truly are a team here. Oh yeah. Team Chatham is a, a wonderful place to work. People it are is. very prideful in working mm -hmm. in Team Chatham. Um, you know, I can be walking in Oglethorpe or in Sam's and, you know, we've got over 2,000 employees, you know, in our team. And I can be walking and obviously I can't know everybody. Yeah. I sometimes will remember, oh, I know that guy, you know, mm -hmm. but I'll be walking and somebody, my daughter and I in Sam's and she's like, oh, Lord, you know, somebody <laughs> will holler, literally, Team Chatham, you know, because they don't remember my name, but they know Team Chatham. Yeah, yeah. And right. uh, that's awesome. You know, it then is. people hear that and like, what? So I have people outside will say Team Chatham right. because I say it's our love language. You know, it's, that's how we have established ourselves. I don't, I don't, folks don't work for me. We work together. That's right. There are days you have to be boss and supervisors, you know, yeah. but we're a team. We're not going to win a game unless we're all on the same, you know, sheet of music. We have the same game plan. We're mm -hmm. going to lose, and we don't lose. And that's, I mean, it's a really good management style for the county because people work better when they work with you not for you exactly yes. and i Look, know as as someone who works for you mm -hmm. works with you i appreciate that yeah and we you know and i you know people say we, we have fun well we do there are days you know you prefer to cry sure. but you know we support each other um uh, you know we you know recently we each have michael and linda and i my assistant managers we have teams the gold team, the green team, and I have the blue team. Go blue team. Go blue team. So anyway, you know, we're, you know, but um, we develop relationships. So if you're having a bad day, you know, like if, if you are on our mm -hmm. team is, um, let's say, Danielle in my office or Everett Reagan at c &T, you mm -hmm. could call and say, look, I, can I come over and vent and you can help me with an idea? Sure. That's awesome. It is. You know, because I, I can't always be there or Linda or Michael. But you can go to someone that you now develop a relationship with and see, what can I do? Because Lee's not always right. Catherine's not always right. Mm -hmm. You might be, and I may not be. But we need to have a relationship where we can say, again, like marriage, okay, let's work this out. Or, okay, what do we do? Right. That's awesome. We're getting rid of the silos. Mm -hmm. yeah. I call also those, uh, you know, the sandbox. Don't get yep. mine. I don't get in yours. We put play on the same beach. That's right. Yeah. So, I, I, that's all good stuff because yeah. I mean it's very different than it was years ago when oh. I was a kid here. So sure. I I appreciate that the cities and the counties work together better, um, and all those things. Abby, final thoughts for today? You've been quiet over there. I've I've been taking it all in because I feel like I've learned a lot, and I, I'm really excited about. Um, the prospect of having better recycling opportunities. So oh, yes. I, I, yeah, that That's really a big deal. Up. That's <laughs> yeah. a very big deal. So I don't know if you know this, Mr. Smith, but um, she came from our recycling division when she came to May. Yeah, she really? was the that outreach was, coordinator. Yeah. That's exactly right. I forgot that. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, you might need get to ready for her. a new job. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't steal her. Um, <laughs> she can be the public information liaison. She can help uh, David. Nash. That's right. He's our recycling that's right. coordinator. That's right. 
Cool. So any other final thoughts for you? Um, well, I just are really, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sure. come and um, share some information about the differences between unincorporated Chatham, City Chatham, and Chatham County itself. Sure. Um, and I really hope that our listeners today have learned a lot. I know I have. Um, anything else? No, Nick, you got any final thoughts over there? I know you have a microphone. Are you asleep? <laughs> yeah, I know you can't see me. I'm here. <laughs> but no, I enjoy working for the county, and I really love the team concept. Um, I've had several jobs where everyone says, oh, we're a team, we're a team. But once you start working there, it's not really a team. It, like, just divulges into a bunch of eyes. But Team Chatham, it truly is a team, and I love that work aspect and the dynamic. Yeah. And it just makes you actually enjoy coming to work. Exactly. Exactly. That was the voice of God, by the way. If anybody, anybody <laughs> who's watching this, yeah, okay. anybody was, watching, okay. that was the voice of God. Um, Mr. <laughs> Smith, quite. final thoughts for you today? No, I appreciate this opportunity. The one thing that, um, you know, particularly with the, our strategic plan, the blueprint, mm -hmm. is better educating the public on our programs. There are things available to people they don't know about. Sure, that's true. Um, you know, just like what is the city and county. Mm -hmm. You know, because the lines are blurred, which I'm all right with, but you know, I always hate when somebody calls and says, you know, I've got this issue. I say, well, that's, you know, Pooler. Mm -hmm. Here's the number. Well, we may give them the number, and then I will type out an email and say, you know, Robbie Bird, who's the manager, Robbie, just talk to, you know, uh, Miss Adele, and she's getting ready to call you over so and so and so. Please look after her. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and we all do that together. Again, relationships. But I'm proud of Team Chatham. I'm proud to be here, and uh, Chatham County's my home. Yeah, I, we're we're glad to have you. Yeah, You've been I a good it. addition to the team. Um, I, I'm just I, I learned a lot today. I, I think every time I go into these types of uh, interviews, well, that's okay. I can actually I do this interview that I had forgotten. You know, the, absolutely. Well, I'm old, so you know, I forget. That. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just going to stop there. <laughs> so, Mr. Smith, you previewed next week for us, and you didn't even know it because okay. Chief Hadley is going to be here with us next week mm -hmm. awesome. to talk about putting together the police department and what they're doing. You see and they're... The, my second best decision. Yes. Jeff. Absolutely. <laughs> he was a good decision. I'm very glad yes. that he's here. Yeah. So, everybody, join us again next week on the chat, and we'll see you then. Have a great day.